Hey folks, we're going to learn what a definite integral is today. So by the end of today's lesson, you're going to be able to tell me what is a definite integral and then how can I estimate the values of definite integrals. So before we get going, what do you need to be good at? You need to be able to multiply, you need to be able to add, and you need to be able to read graphs. So if you can do those three things, you should be ready to rock. All right, so first of all, we're gonna take a look at the velocity of a car moving down the road. And that velocity is gonna be measured in feet per second. And we're gonna look at a graph uh, where we've got that graphed against seconds. So here we go. We've got the graph of a car. You can see it here, the, the, the velocity of the car. The velocity is definitely decreasing over time. Going a little fast, maybe we saw a police officer. We wanna slow down so we don't get a ticket. So the first question we want to ask is, what does the velocity seem to be between 30 and 50 seconds? That velocity appears to be leveling out, meaning the velocity is getting constant on that time interval. So how far do you travel in that time interval? Well, a long time ago, I learned that distance is equal to rate times time. And rate times time, rate meaning velocity, time meaning the time interval that we go that speed. Uh, since the rate is constant, we can simply multiply 60 feet per second times 20 seconds. Cancel the units out, feet per second times seconds is feet, and get that we've traveled 1,200 feet on that time interval. Now, you, I've, you see that shaded in as a green area, a green rectangle. And there's a reason why some of you are thinking that definite integral might just be area under the curve. And it's not. Time out on that one. It looks like area under a curve, but it is not area under a curve. The reason you might be confused right now is because another equation similar to distance is equal to rate times time is the area of a rectangle. Area is length times width. That's well, a very similar equation. And in this case, for this problem, it appears to follow, to overlap, okay? So now we wanna ask the question, how far does the, tra the car travel in feet between zero and 20 seconds? Again, how far the car travels is going to be a product of the feet per second velocity multiplied by the seconds uh, in time interval because feet per second times seconds is feet. Uh, based on the graph, that means we want to uh, find this blue area. Now the problem with finding this blue area is that unlike the time interval from 30 to 50 seconds where velocity looked pretty constant, here on zero to 20 seconds, the velocity is changing. It is decreasing from around 100 feet per second to something a little bit greater than 60 feet per second. As far as what that actual blue area is, I don't know what it is exactly, but I can estimate it by counting blocks. Okay, I kind of counted the blocks and I got, the, I got all these down below. And then I just kind of, uh, here's one, here's two, here's three three, four and a half. So I just counted uh, and just estimated. So I estimated that the car went 16, uh, 25 feet. Okay. Uh, if we think about derivative being a change at an instant, boom, instantaneous rate of change. We need to think about definite integral being a change over a bunch of time instants. So a change over a, an extended interval of time rather than change, boom, at an instant. So let's define what a definite integral actually is. A definite integral is defined as the product of X and Y, okay? It's not the area under the curve. Pump the brakes. It's, that's, that's what it looks like if you graph it. I, I get your point, but there's a difference between what something is and what something does. The definite integrals application is to find the area under the curve. But we don't want to say that definite integral is area. We want to say that definite integral is a product 
of x and y. Thinking deep into the recesses of your calculus brain, you might remember that a derivative is a division problem of the change in y divided by the change in x, right? So a derivative is a division problem. Everything you did in differential calculus was all surrounded around a, a division problem. Well, now that we're in integral calculus, we want to think about that as the opposite. So the opposite of division, of course, is multiplication. Definite integral is a product. Say it with me. Definite integral is a, that's right, a product of x and y. So how that looks on paper, you see it here. The definite integral looks like this symbol. So that we would say that's the definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x. So you get that same kind of language there with respect to x, the language of derivatives, the derivative with respect to x, where we're going to integrate with respect to x as well. So here we have another graph, and this graph is a graph of the cross-sectional area of a football uh, over the length of the football. So on the x-axis, we have the length of the football or the distance from one end of a football measured in inches. And we have the heights measured in inches squared. Okay, so what I want to know is what does the definite integral of a of x on the interval from 0 to 12, what does that represent? Why, why would we want to do a definite integral? So let's think about it. Since a definite integral is a product, Let's multiply the units together, okay? So the unit, the x units by the y units would be inches multiplied by inches squared, and that's inches cubed. That's cubic inches. So think about it. What do you measure in cubic inches, cubic units? That's right, you measure volume in cubic inches. So the definite integral of this function a of x with respect to x on the interval 0 to 12 would represent the volume of the football. Just take a moment and pause and think there for a second. What I said earlier about definite integral not being area under a curve. Setting definite integral equal to area in your mind discounts all of the possible applications and meanings of what a definite integral is. In two examples, we have seen a definite integral represent feet that have been traveled and also volume of a football. So a definite integral is in no way, shape, or form related to area in our sense of what area, because area is measured in square units. And we have uh, units feet, which is a distance, and cubic inches, which is a measure of volume. So don't say a definite integral is area. Say a definite integral is a product. So if we want to approximate the value of the definite integral from 0 to 12 of a of x with respect to x, uh, we need to notice that each block that you count there is a block that is 1 inch by 5 uh, square inches. So each block is representative of 5 square inches. I did some counting and some estimating, and I thought that there was about 44 total blocks, which multiplied by 5 is about 220. But that's just an estimate that I came up with. You might have come up with a different estimate. Okay, so we're going to pause there and think about this video before you watch the next one.